Wait, let me just mention my little thing. So I work for Canonical in the Lexi team, as uh, Stefan mentioned. Uh, I'm going to uh, do a demo uh, of a feature uh, that is being worked on. Uh, it's not yet uh, in master. Um, it will be released uh, at the end of February. But first, uh, uh, let me ask who has uh, no idea what uh, LexD is? Okay. Uh, so there was a presentation before, but uh, it's uh, um, container management for system containers. That means uh, your container will look uh, like uh, a virtual machine, so to speak. So I'm not going to uh, speak about that. I, I know I will assume that you know something about it. So I have uh, uh, three um, virtual machines here. Um, each one is running a, a plain uh, LexD daemon, just, just fresh from, from that uh, branch build. Um, as you know, uh, the LexD daemon usually knows only about the containers on the machine it runs on. But I will uh, create, create a cluster of these three daemons on these three VMs and uh, they will appear you as one. You can use the uh, regular LexD API transparently against uh, the cluster and uh, there are also uh, fault tolerance features that I will show. Uh, the first thing I need to create uh, uh, the cluster that can be done with the uh, init command. It asks you if you want to actually create the cluster. Yes, so, uh, I'll ask you some details but it's just the name of the node, the address, if I'm enjoying an existing node, no. Uh, fresh password. I will create a storage pool just with the uh, default values, uh, uh, which will use uh, uh, that fast pool backed by a file. Uh, back. And a network bridge. All right, this is the bootstrap node, so this is the, the first node uh, of your cluster. And you can see it's been uh, successfully configured. I can uh, go and it's empty, uh, so it has no containers. Uh, I can go to the second node uh, and run again, uh, let's be in it. Uh, let's be in it. And uh, change, uh, choose the name of the machine uh, and the address. Uh, I'm joining an existing cluster now. I have to, to get the uh, address of uh, this one. will ask me for the trust password and uh, uh, if I set the fingerprint, yes. Um, it will warn me that all the data will be lost uh, and yes, I don't care right now. And asks uh, uh, for a storage configuration that has to match the original node and uh, natural configuration as well. So now, uh, if I run a C list, uh, I still have no nodes, but uh, if I run, uh, let's see, uh, cluster list, uh, as well, let me adjust uh, the font here because it sounds too big. So you can see uh, there are now two nodes in the cluster and uh, I'm going to um, add another one with the same uh, uh, sequence of commands essentially. Uh, yes, I set the default underlying cluster um, which is uh, uh, oops. So 
I'll go to that. So if I 
a run config show, you can see that the trust password is not there. So you, even if uh, the node is down when it, when it comes up, uh, the state uh, uh, gets replicated and I can list containers again, they're still there. Uh, the, the, the node uh, 2 was, was up, so uh, it's still running. Uh, so the way it, it, this is done um, is by replicating uh, uh, the SQLite right ahead log using Raft. So uh, the, the point is that it's very uh, convenient uh, to operate. You don't need uh, a, a, a separate um, full tolerant uh, distributed data store. It's all in process. So all you need to run is the last process. It will take or uh, care of. Uh, uh, failover and uh, uh, replication of, uh, of your data. Um, you might ask why. Um, probably cluster management is uh, considered by some uh, solved the problem uh, since uh, there's Kubernetes. And I, I was wondering that myself. Uh, uh, probably at the beginning I, I asked why don't we just uh, uh, create a CRI plugin for uh, Kubernetes and, and let people uh, drive a single uh, LexD node managed uh, by Kubernetes in a cluster. And yeah, that is possible, but the, the, the drawback is that also Kubernetes is a big and difficult base to, uh, to drive. So one of the use cases that also Stefan mentioned is uh, uh, systems, uh, applications that were not designed uh, with cloud in mind, uh, applications that are not cloud native and uh, need uh, in often cases uh, uh, expect full systems and that can work in a um, um, uh, uh, system container but not so well in an application container. So we hope that uh, this feature clustering makes it easier uh, to run those workloads without the operational overhead uh, associated with, uh, say, Kubernetes or uh, similar solutions. Uh, so that was it. Um, I, I kept it short. If uh, uh, there are questions or anything, I, I know I went it through rather quickly, so let me know. Questions? Yes. Well, uh, how will failover for uh, containers work? Failover for containers. So, uh, if uh, the node you... So, uh, the question is how failover for containers work. If the node you are running on uh, dies, of course, your uh, container process dies. Uh, in that case, there's, there's nothing you can do. But, um, for example, what you could do is use a Ceph as a storage backend for, for the file systems uh, of, of your containers. In that case, uh, if your uh, container dies on a node, you can uh, pick another node and, and start it again and it will be this really the same state as it was because uh, uh, what, what's written on disk is replicated by Ceph. That is an example, but uh, uh, clustering by it, like let's see, clustering by itself does not manage uh, uh, container failover. That's uh, uh, out of band. Uh, it, it gives you some primitives to build on. You have options. One is a uh, storage application with Ceph. There are others, but yeah, this this is more or less it. Thanks. Uh, in case of uh, network split uh, and uh, introduce changes in both parts of the cluster, uh, what is the behavior? So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll show you. So, uh, as I mentioned very briefly, uh, what we've done is to cr create uh, a, a little patch to SQLite. Uh, which replicates uh, the SQLite log using Raft, the Raft uh, algorithm. So in case of a split brain, uh, and in order to make a, a database change, for example, uh, I don't know, an, an update SQL query, uh, uh, 
with this machinery, you need to, to have a, a quorum of nodes that uh, acknowledge that you wrote that uh, write uh, a log entry. If you don't have a quorum, uh, the operation fails. So in case of split brain, uh, there's just a fail. The, the trade-off here is that uh, Raft uh, um, in, in the like cap spectrum, uh, consistency availability partitioning, gives you consistency and partitioning, but not availability. In, in, in that case, uh, it, it, the class is not available anymore, but you won't get inconsistency. So uh, uh, it won't work, but it won't do harm. So you, you need to have a, a better form of nodes. Yeah, the, the, the actual quorum is recorded as a transaction in the database itself. So if there's a speed drain, they do they all know exactly what the quorum should be, regardless of how many nodes they can see. So they will just hang. Yeah, yeah you show that um, you can copy from every node. Is it possible to get a worker node? With can you repeat the question? Um, to make um, a worker node that is not uh, in the config map, so it, it doesn't configure the whole cluster. I, I'm not sure I understand the question. So you have, well, you you have three nodes. Three nodes. And every node can uh, config, configure the cluster. Is there, yes. Is it possible to have a node that is, ah. is configured by other nodes, but not um, configured? Okay. Um, the so um, the the design is that each node is. Uh, so the question is, uh, uh, can you um, have just one single node, which is your point of reference, and uh, all configuration changes go through that node, and the other nodes. You, you, you don't touch them, you don't use them for, for changing that configuration. The answer is probably no, uh, because um, uh, the design is that each node uh, is, um, is equal, uh, in some sense, with, with some details. Perhaps in the future what will you be able to do is to set uh, users uh, and permissions uh, to limit, for example, who can do what. But, from for now, all nodes are, are equal. Yeah, so just like that, two things can I mention there. Uh, one of them is, uh, I'm not sure if you touched on that. Uh, if you've got like a 40 nodes cluster, you only have three database nodes. Uh, there's no reason for being more than three because we get quorum, and otherwise it just gets slow and so and so and so. Um, so we will effectively always make sure you've got three just selected ones. Um, that's one thing. So you don't compute the next few nodes that are not active database nodes, but if you don't check on them, just go through the API and you don't actually see the difference. It's an information detail. Really. The other thing uh, that might cover your question somehow is um, LXD by itself supports uh, copying containers, copy copying images and all that stuff between LXD nodes, even if they're not in a cluster. So you can totally have a non-cluster LXD and a LXD cluster and then copy your containers back and forth. That's perfectly fine. Uh, just like you can have two LXD clusters, one for like staging and for production, you can also copy your containers and your images in between the two through the normal LXD network API. Yeah. Uh, what will happen when I will create a container without the target? Uh, for now, it creates uh, the container on the node you are uh, uh, executing the, the command on. Um, by the release, uh, it will pick uh, uh, the node with the least number of containers. Yes, so it's, uh, it tries to uh, very simply load balance uh, uh, the workload. So by default, if you don't specify a target, it will pick uh, the node with the least number of contents. This is very simplistic uh, scheduling. Uh, this is what we'll, we'll be doing at the, at the start, but we'll see how it goes and uh, we can add more.